coming up on The Sporting Chef. Welcome to The Sporting Chef. Today on the show, I cook, she cooks, he cooks, he doesn't cook, and he smokes. What do you get when you find the best fish and game chefs? Cookbook authors, award winners, fishmongers, outdoor experts, and put them on the fastest half hour on outdoor television. Hosted by one of America's best known wild game chefs, Scott Lacey, The Sporting Chef. Brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Today on the show, it's all about fish, no game today. Some parts of the country, it's really hard to get really good fresh fish, especially saltwater fish. Well, this is how I get my fish. This comes delivered to my door from Catalina Offshore Products in San Diego. I have been using them for years and years. It's the freshest, absolutely the best fish you can get, like this yellowfin tuna. This is ahi tuna. I want you to note the color. It's just an absolutely gorgeous piece of fish. This is a California halibut. It's a smaller halibut than the Alaskan halibut. The flavor is very similar. It's very, very mild in flavor. Breaking down whole fish can be kind of a daunting task for a lot of people. It's really, really, really very simple. Chef Jen Felmley in San Diego, who's also a regular at the Catalina Offshore Products, she's going to show you how to break down this spiny fish that a lot of times when we're offshore and we're catching sculpin, we go, oh no, it's a sculpin, and we throw it back. Well, Jen cooks it. All right, so sculpin, they're, they're pointy, they're ugly, they're not so pretty looking, but they're really tasty. Sculpin's one of the unique fish that you're gonna find here at Catalina Offshore Products, and you're not gonna find it at any other fish market. All right, so first things first, we've got a bunch of spikes on this here fish. Uh, there's a few up here in the head, so you're gonna try to avoid kind of putting your hand right directly onto the head. Uh, the other thing is we've got these spines that run along the back. What I like to do is just take a pair of scissors, come right along the back, and just cut these out. Once I have those spines removed, I'm then going to go to the ones that lay here on the belly. And then the last thing I'm going to do is the last set right here. I just want to remove all these so that when I do go to gut the fish, I don't end up having the fish gut me. So I'm just going to work my way up the fish towards the head. Open it up. So nice and clean. That's your rubbish. Ready to go. Now later on, Jen is gonna turn that sculpin into a steamed sculpin with spicy Thai sauce. You wanna stick around for that. Now I'm gonna get my halibut and my tuna ready for whatever it is I'm gonna do with it. On the halibut, I'm gonna first dunk it in the egg wash. I'm gonna season that also. I'm gonna put some of the High Mountain Gourmet Fish seasoning in here. So let me just give that a little extra dunk. And then I'm going to coat this in Japanese breadcrumbs. This is going to be very, very simple. Capers, white wine, lemon, pretty classic preparation. For my tuna, I have Dijon mustard. You can use either lemon or lime juice. This happens to be a Meyer lemon. And I've got some sesame oil. And this is toasted sesame oil in the Asian section of your market. And to add a little bit of salt and flavor to it, I have the High Mountain Gourmet Fish Seasoning. And I just want to give that a stir. So I'm going to coat the tuna with this sesame mustard mixture. And then after it's all coated, I'm going to press it into sesame seeds. So it's going to be a sesame crusted ahi tuna. And the sauce is going to be a cucumber jalapeno ginger relish. On top of the halibut, it's gonna be an avocado lime sauce. Sound pretty good? So here's the thing about freezing fish. If it's got a lot of moisture in the fish, or if it's a piece of meat and it's got some moisture in it, it doesn't really seal on that vacuum bag. Well, here's a food saver tip from a really close friend of mine that'll help you out. 
If you've ever tried to seal something that's a little bit moist, like a piece of fish or some duck breasts in a food saver vacuum packaging unit, you'll know that if it's a little bit moist, what happens is the juice runs out through the open end of the bag, goes into the chamber, doesn't seal. So what do you do? You got a couple of choices. One is to use some folded up paper towels. You first put the meat in, you put the paper towel at the opening like this. So what happens is you get rid of the moisture. The moisture doesn't get past this paper towel here, but it doesn't give it quite as good of a seal. Food Saver listens and what they've come up with is the dam bag with a built-in moisture barrier right here that keeps the moisture from your duck breasts from getting into the channel and not sealing. Now, of course, label it. It seals tightly and it seems to work a little bit better, at least more consistently than the paper towel trick. Chef Jen knocks the sculpin out of the park. JD has a tip. Tommy cooks sea bass and Buddy fires up the smoker. Stick around. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. I'm Scott Laysath, and today it's all about fish. I have some really, really gorgeous ahi tuna right here. It's coated with Dijon mustard, sesame oil, and some high mountain gourmet fish seasoning. And I'm going to press it into these sesame seeds, and that's going to create a crust on the outside. This is the halibut. It's going to be coated with some Japanese breadcrumbs, some more of the high mountain fish seasoning, and some fresh basil. That's going to go into a bunch of butter. But first off, I've got Jen Femley. She's the chef that broke down the fish in the first segment. She's going to transform sculpin flesh into something of beauty. All right, Scott, so it's really simple to cook a whole fish. You really don't have to do fillets or break the fish down. For this particular recipe, I'm going to steam the whole fish, and I'm going to use something as simple as an old-fashioned vegetable steamer that you can buy at the 99-cent store. Uh, but to make mine a little bit better, I'm going to use some frozen banana leaves. Um, they're really simple. You just pull it out of the freezer, and then you want to take the whole leaf and cut it down to size and wipe off anything that's on the outside. The whole fish that we're using today is a sculpin. We have gutted the fish. We've also removed the spines that run along the top of the fish and along the belly as well. I'm next going to make a couple of scores that go through the skin but not too deep through the flesh. What this is going to allow for is a little bit of flavor to infuse into the fish as opposed to just sitting on the outside. So I'm going to flip it over and score the opposite side. We're going to stuff the cavity with a bit of lemongrass, ginger, and cilantro stems. For the lemongrass, I want to cut it into smaller pieces. For the center cuts, which has the most amount of flavor, I take the back of my knife and I break it up just a little bit. And my easy tip for ginger is just to take a regular kitchen spoon and peel the skin off the outside. Once you peel your ginger, you're just gonna slice it into rounds. Now the cilantro stems, the top of the cilantro, we took some of the leaves off and we'll be using that for garnish. So now we've got all of our beautiful aromatics in the fish, which is going to make it beautiful and flavorful. And we're going to place it into the steamer. Right, so we've now had about 12 to 15 minutes, depending on the size of your fish. Place it right onto our platter. And then I've got this lovely sauce that I made. And I'm going to spoon that right over the fish. So this is a spicy, sweet and sour Thai sauce. We started with our shallots, our garlic, and our red jalapeno, and a pinch of salt. We pureed that just to break them all up so they weren't big chunks anymore. I then added into that uh, fish sauce, lime juice, and grated palm sugar. We added that in, pureed it to make kind of a loose paste, and then we add in cilantro. We'll season with a bit of salt and pepper, and then we can always add more sweet, sour, or salty as we'd like. 
I like to thoroughly coat the fish in sauce. Once I have the sauce all over the fish, I'm of course going to garnish with that remaining cilantro that we talked about. And then of course some lime wedges. The lime wedges work as a beautiful garnish, but it's also really nice to have that fresh citrus with your fish. So whether it's this ugly sculpin, small striped bass, freshwater fish, saltwater fish, any real catch of the day will work for this. I told you it would be a thing of beauty. Jen is a regular at Catalina Offshore Products. She's a lecturer, a private chef. Check out her website. She's in San Diego. If you need a private party, she's the one I would go to. And now if I'm fishing in Northern California or Alaska, my go-to fishing guide is a guy named J.D. Ritchie. He writes, he fishes, and he's gonna tell me what he does with salmon eggs. I eat them in sushi bars. All right, right here, this is the necker of the gods when it comes to salmon fishing. Good old row. When we're using row up here, there's times when the squaw fish are so thick that you can't get your bait down to the salmon before it gets just completely obliterated. The squaw fish is a native minnow here that lives in the Sacramento River. Just a sort of nuisance fish. They, they will rip your bait off the hook all the time and they live in the same area. So a lot of times you put your, your row down to the bottom right where the salmon are and it never gets a chance to get seen by salmon. So there is a fix for that and it's called making spawn sacks or making berries, whatever you want to call it. Basically you're putting your, your eggs in a mesh sack so they can't get completely devoured by squawfish to give the salmon a chance to see it. The way you do this is you can buy a couple different types of netting. A lot of companies make it. You have a couple different varieties here. This is the roll. This is a little less expensive than the pre-cut squares, but I'm all about uh, the pre-cut squares. They're way easier. Take a couple squares, lay them down on your, your work area here. Then you cut the bait into size chunks that you want. Now, we're typically using anywhere from a dime size piece of bait up to a quarter. Just kind of depends on the day, what the fish want. And then you take some thread, and you wad it up basically like a wonton or a dumpling. And then I just kind of twist it tight. You don't want to squeeze too hard because you're going to mush all the bait in there. And then you take the thread, do a few wraps around the top, throw a half inch, cinch it down, pull it tight. And then you just trim the excess off right there, the little top. Boom. Now that bait's going to last a lot longer than just a regular piece of row that's not in a bag. And, uh, ready to go and then I just put them in a little container for the next day so you have a bunch ready to go. So Scott you could eat salmon eggs and people do but that's a terrible waste of really good bait so don't do it. Let's do this and let's go fishing. Coming up tuna, halibut, corvina and cabrilla. Stick around you're watching The Sporting Chef. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. I'm Scott Laysath. I've got halibut and tuna. Over here I've got some melted butter and olive oil. It's about a 50-50 combo. The butter will give it flavor. The olive oil will keep it from burning. Um, this is my panko crusted egg washed halibut. That's going to go into the pan. You want to make sure that that oil and butter is hot before you put it in there. You want it to be crisp on the outside. I'm going to hit it with a little bit more of the High Mountain Gourmet Fish seasoning on the outside. I'm going to hold off on the tuna because frankly I like my yellowfin, my ahi tuna, raw. That's going to go in in a minute. I'll give this a flip eventually. I've got my sauces over here. And now I've got Tommy Gomes, who's going to cook cabrilla. Now, if you're in San Diego and you talk to any angler and you say, what about Tommy? They know you're talking about Tommy Gomes. Cabrilla, Scott, stop. Like, they're asking me, what is it? Here it is. Sport cut fish, commercial fish out of Baja. It's a great fighter. This thing will eat a spinner bait, a grub, surface plug, all that stuff. Scott, do you fish? I don't think so. You catch? You might go fishing, but you don't catch. But I want to show you the great thing about this cabrilla is if you look in here, you can see this great fat content. Right up in here, you see that colorization? The paleness, that's all fat along the top, fat along the bottom. Uh, we're just going to cut it up. Just going to cut it right down the center. Two pieces of fish. One, two. The more you cook, the more you eat, the better you feel. Seafood. 
We're just gonna throw it down here on the griddle. I'm gonna put a little bit of high mountain seasoning on this. Just a little bit on the top, or on the bottom actually, we're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of lemon on there. Little salt, not much. Just a little pepper, add a little bit of a kick to it. Uh, again, picking fish, touch it, it bounces back, it's nice and fresh. You wanna smell it. When you get the filet, your filet wants to be nice and shiny, it doesn't wanna be dull. You wanna give it a smell, it wants to smell fresh. You can touch it so it doesn't bounce back. If it doesn't bounce back, you wanna get rid of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over and you can see the caramelization and here's where the flavoring comes in. A little more high mountain seasoning. Salmon flavored, but you know what? It's for salmon, but we're gonna try it for anything. Add a little pepper on there. I'm gonna take one more squeeze of lemon. I'm gonna cover it. What I like to do with this griddle from Camp Chef is I like to go ahead and cover it up, just like that, use an aluminum pan. Remember, it's gonna be hot when you take it off. Don't ask me how I know. So, Cabrilla, sport fish from the bass family. They get to about 12 pounds, a little bit bigger here and there if you're lucky. Unlike Scott, he catches small ones when he does catch. Let's check this out, see how it's cooking up. It only takes a second. You put it in this little lid and it steams up nice. Here you go. It's a great piece of fish. Catalina Offshore, Cabrilla from Baja. Beautiful, look at that steam. Thanks, Tommy. I've got some fish that I got from you in this skillet. This is the California halibut. It's ready, it's crusty. I gave it a flip. I'm heating this pan up for the tuna. But I wanna show you what I'm gonna put on it. I've got, in this one, this is what's gonna go on top of the tuna. Cucumber, jalapeno. This is some chopped up pickled ginger. I'm gonna put a little bit of low sodium soy sauce in there and some agave nectar. Agave nectar is sweet. You could just use sugar if you don't have any. I'm gonna turn this guy off so I don't burn my halibut. And then this is just rice vinegar. Rice vinegar is sour. My standby, the gourmet fish seasoning. And then I'm just gonna give this a little stir. Over here, this is avocado. All this is is a soft, ripe avocado that's been mashed up. I'm gonna add some lime juice. I'm just gonna get that all mixed up. In just a second, the tuna's going into the pan, and when we come back, I'll show you what all this stuff is supposed to look like on a plate. Now here's Buddy. This is Buddy Tofu. We're gonna show you one more fish dish today. I had some of that Corvina still from down in Mazalong. What I ended up doing is I took some jalapeno pork sausage. So any of you people that got that wild pig meat sausage or venison sausage, take it, put it out on the pit. Cook it till it gets good and smoky, put it in the food processor, chop it all up. I mixed in olive oil and breadcrumbs. And you wanna mix that till it'll form a little light ball so that it packs real good on that fish. Before I put it on there, I squeeze some lemon juice on it. You don't have to put any other seasoning until you get through with this. Now I'm fixing to bake it in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes. And then we'll turn it on the broiler, put a little crust on the top, and then we'll sit there and eat the rest of it. Okay, here it is, buddy Tofu. Got this finished dish. Wild game sausage crusted carabina. And I add just a little touch of seasoned salt on the top of it. Didn't take much. So there it is. Go ahead and fix it up. It's easy to do, do it with catfish, any white flaky fish. Works with all of them. Till we see you next time, enjoy your game.
Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. It's time to plate up what I did with this halibut here. I'm just going to put a big squeeze of lemon. On the tuna, cast iron skillet, olive oil, medium heat, and all I did was turn it on all sides so that the outside got crusty with that sesame seed. It stuck to it and it's not going to be overcooked and I'll show you that just to prove it. On top, this is cucumber, jalapeno, a little low sodium soy sauce and some more of that pickled ginger. We'll put that right on top of the tuna, on top of the halibut. There's that avocado lime puree, just mashed up avocado and lime. Let me show you what this looks like inside. Oh, oh, yes. That right there is a thing of beauty. And there's some people on the other side of the camera that are saying, I got it. No, that's mine. I want to thank my guest today, Chef Jen Felmley. She's from San Diego. She's a private chef. She's a lecturer. Check her out. Tommy Gomes from Catalina Offshore Products. J.D. Ritchie from J.D. Ritchie. And then there's Buddy. Hope to see you next time on The Sporting Show.